Mind Gap Podcast. Welcome to Mind Gap Podcast. I'm Doug. I'm Justin. Doug! I meant Justin! I'm addressing myself with this question. Doug, are you ready? <laughs> All right, cool. I'm just going to... I was I'll stuck on... My name's Doug! Anyway, uh, Justin, what's something that you know is good, but you hate it? My job. Is it good? Well, it's good in the sense that I have gainful employment. Okay. Like I'm, I have a job. It provides health insurance. It allows me to eat and pay my mortgage and this and this and this. So I know it is a good thing that I have a job, but I hate it. Okay, I respect yes. it. That's also, good. mushrooms. All right, I know See, they're good for with, you. I, I, I do not yeah. like them. I was gonna say salad. You know, salad. Yeah, I know I it's like good salad, for you. Conversely, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I know they're good for you, but I hate it. Can't, can't do it. It's, it's it. rabbit food is what it is. Yeah, it is. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. I told a harrowing story in pre-roll. Mm. And Justin is, is, oh, is bringing it back just, up. Bringing it back up. Poking. I'm just poking. Boy, we'd um, love to share that on this podcast and bring everybody down. Yay. Right? Doug, what's something that's that's good that you, that's good that you, but you don't like it. You hate it. Salad. I said it. <laughs> oh, so that's, you just. I thought that was a response to the mushroom comment, but that is no, yours. I, that was one of the things. It. It's like, yeah, I know it's good for me, but you know, yeah, you know, it's 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 I hate it. You know, it's, it's that's no fair. good. You know, yeah, it's, it's totally it's, fair. It's, it's unfortunate. I don't like it. Um, yeah, I, this is this is a fun question because I was just like, man, I don't, you know, there's so many things that I'm like, I'm sure there's some rules out there that are like these are good, but I don't like them. You know, like oh yeah, part of me would want to say the speed limit, but I'm like, honestly, I'm glad there's speed limits. Because there's idiots out there, you know? Well, and yeah, I mean, with speed limits, the amount of people that just straight up ignore it. Right. So can you imagine if it was a, just a straight up free flow? It's like you just do go however fast you want to go. Yeah. It's like, no. Just, good luck. People are like, well, the Autobahn in Germany. I'm like, Germans are different than us in right. a lot of ways. You know what else happened in Germany? Yeah. You know, not that long ago. <laughs> Hmm? Like two people. You want to do this? You know, yeah. you want to like go down this road? Like two people a couple. You know? <laughs> That's the weirdest way of I phrasing know. time. <laughs> I like, when you put it that way, it doesn't seem that long. Just, That's a credit to, to that was a bit from uh, Joe Rogan in one of the specials years ago. He's like, people talk about you know centuries, or whatever. He goes, if you think about this, it was like that was like four people ago. That wasn't that far. And I was like, that's actually a good way of putting it. That's you know? really funny. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> um. Yeah. No. I there's a whole bunch of stuff that I, that I went through on this but yeah but they're like <laughs> speed limits a good speed limits a very good one yeah. um yeah what's all right i mean now? a bunch of laws in general like you said like right shoplifting like yeah, it's a good law but i'd like to take some things <laughs> sometimes sometimes I just want to you know some shit. sometimes i just want i just want it i don't want to pay for it yeah right yeah i feel like good. it's highway robbery how much they're charging me for things now all right now let's flip the script on this one what's something right. that you know is bad but you love it uh, I'm Amazon. <laughs> Amazon. We're sticking in the corporate world with these. You're, you're, I am, you're in a certain yeah, mindset I've got a for theme this. going tonight. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I, many times like a news story will come out and like Beth will, Beth will shoot me a look. of just like, we still have that subscription. I'm like, yeah, because I mean the boys, like, <laughs> I don't know what you want from me. Mostly for me, it's the packages shit. You know what I mean? Like, you yeah, get yeah. shit here fast. You know, you have access to do all that Do you guys order a lot off of Amazon, though? We do. Like, is it? That's okay. That's a state. See, I, I, it's, it's very ad hoc for me. It's here and there. Like, I'm like, oh, I, I need this thing. I don't spend a lot on that sort yeah. of stuff. Jill finds a lot of stuff to order. Although Jill adamantly will not order books off of there. That's because cool. I, I did. She, yeah. She's like adamant about going to local bookstores and or and ordering from those places. A line has been drawn and she like, will not Amazon, cross it. Just butt fucks book people. Yeah. So she's like, nah, I'm not going to do it. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. Like, but I know like there's some people who that's, they get their, 
you know, they order their groceries, they get all of their uh, paper products off there. They, they this like, so it's a very, very regular thing. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. for me, it's more about the streaming, which admittedly I have not watched in quite some time. I, I haven't I've been consumed with other stuff. Ever since they're like, oh, do you want to pay an extra $3 to not have ads? I'm like, I don't want to watch anything on here. Like, I, yeah. I, I, I'm i so upset about that. It's like, I you guess. guys are cocksuckers. Where I'm only yeah, paying, already paying $12 a month for your bullshit. And you're like, do you want an extra $3? Fuck you. Like, right. Which upsets me because something will be coming out there soon that I want to watch. Yep. And then oh, the I'll, boy season four or five, suffer whatever. Yeah. There was something else that was coming out on there. At some point, the Warhammer 40K show is well, coming yeah. out on there. Everyone's been telling me I need to check out uh, Fallout. That's I hear it's good. One. I played Fallout I've 3, a- um, enjoyed it, but I never really got into the. I never played any other games, never had any desire to. I'm like, it's fine. Yeah. Like it was, it was an enjoyable experience, but I was like, Meh, I'm good. Yeah. So, like, they, they, hey, the show is great, but I'm like, I'll, I'll see it at some point. I'm not rushing. To see it, I'm sure it's fine. You know, okay, I'm sure That's it's good. good. I've never played the video games, but I was told even if you have not, it is an enjoyable, an enjoyable watch. To quote my brother, if you haven't played the games, it's an eight out of ten. If you have played the games, it's a nine out of ten. Specifically with this, or was this just in general with video game with, with Fallout the show? Oh, okay, if you, so have, he if you, haven't, if you okay. haven't played the games for Fallout, it's an eight out of ten. If you have played the games, it's a nine out of ten. Gotcha. So it's it's a nominal increase in enjoyability if you've if you have or have not. Yeah, I'm sure there's plenty okay. of stuff in there that are like you know, Easter eggs or things that. You oh know, yeah, yeah. Apparently, uh, according to my brother, it actually uh, expands the canon of the universe. Like the show actually okay. adds more to that universe, which I, you know, pretty cool. But again, it's one of those things where I'm like, to do that. Eh. It's like, hey, are you checking out the Halo show? And I'm like, no. <laughs> no, not really. Did, well, the hate it. that it got <clears throat> from from the fan base when it came out. I didn't even hear anything of like good or bad about it. I was just like it existed and I was like cool and it never yeah. kind of entered into my world, but I guess p- people didn't like it, I suppose. They're really they were really pissed about it. I saw the I did watch the first episode and I I'm like, yeah, I could see why people would be upset by it because I was a fan of the games. I played yeah. them growing up and it did it felt very um know, something felt off and I was talking with Volucci, who is a huge fan of the games, and he's watched the entire series. And uh, he was like, "Yeah, they just they've they've completely um, just bent it over a barrel and just taken liberties with it left and right." He goes, "But apparently, season two is supposed to be like a soft reboot of the series." <laughs> wow! And they're they're trying to right their wrongs, and I'm like, "Cool." That nothing says we're on the right course when in season two you have to soft reboot your whole. Yeah, franchise. we have to retcon things. You're like, we just started, man. <laughs> Oof. That's <laughs> that's got to be really tough. Like my brother and I talked recently about the Warhammer 40K show that's coming out and he's like, "How yeah. would you do it?" And you know, cuz it's it's a vast universe. It's like, how do you take someone yeah. who is not familiar with this at all, introduce it to them in a way that they're sure. interested and they want to learn more? And my suggestion is it's got to be a it's got to be a focused. Like your first foray into it has to be hyper focused on something. You sure. got to pick yeah. some, the safest bet is space Marines because space yeah. Marines are big, cool, you know, warriors that beat the shit out of stuff. And from They're there, kind of the most cinematic part of that, yeah. get a squad of them, get six to eight of them, you know, together. So you get to know those characters and through their exploits in a certain situation, you get to learn more about the universe. You get exposed to different things sure. like the orcs, the Tyranids, what chaos is. And then you can kind of go from there. And there's some great spinoffs you could do with that universe that hyper focus on certain things. But I'm like, you can't just be like the Horus heresy, which would be cool. I'd love to see that, but there's so much you have to like, you, you have to get people prepared for. Cause it's like, right. Even something as simple as like, Oh, here's this group. It's like, Oh, well to know more about them, you have to know about, there's this guy called the emperor. He's basically like super Jesus and he's dead. Kind of, he's on a throne. And every day they sacrifice a thousand psyker like people to to him so that he can kind of keep the giant flashlight on in the warp so that people can navigate the warp, which, by the way, the warp is this place that reflects human emotion. And that's where all the really bad chaos guys live. But that's also how people traverse space and time and they go through the warp to transverse from one place. to another. But you see the emperor <coughs> built like 20 kids, 20 sons, but 
They all got the chaos gods were like, we're gonna, we don't like this. We're going to shoot them all corners of the universe. And like half of them turned out bad and they all revolted and they fought each other to the death. And, you know, it's, it's crazy, you know, and through all of them, through their gene seeds came the space Marines, you know, tale as old as time, right? It's a classic tale. <laughs> it's a c- classic. It's that story they, circle they. you always hear about in, in school, yep. you know, <laughs> it's Didn't, so, you know what? <laughs> Tex, Tex is, he didn't he do like a series of like hour long videos explaining the universe of Warhammer? I, he does something. He does uh, um, Battletech 3000, I think is his jam. He's, he knows oh, was what, that? he knows what 40K okay. is. I think he looks at 40K. He kind of looks, looks at that and he's like, no, no, I'm not here <laughs> for you. down on it. I'm he here. did. I, so was it the, the Battletech that, is that what he, cause he did these like, it, they were like, like a multi hour long series, yeah. like really well produced. That mm-hmm. was about the Battletech universe. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. He well then they need to hire him right. to do some required viewing for anyone who's going to be it's a pre watch. Right. You've got to watch this if you're gonna watch the series. Well that's the thing homework. too, is you got Henry Cavill, who is a huge 40k yeah. fan. Like nerd, yeah. Super and I love I will watch every clip of anyone ever bring up 40k and watch him light up. There was one recently where He's being interviewed. They're like, well, this is the nerd corner. So we just got to say, like, what's your what's your nerd thing? And he's like, well, it's uh, obvious I'm a Warhammer 40K person. And this guy, other guy's other castmate goes, oh, what army are you playing? And he goes, oh, I'm playing the uh, Deptus Custodes. He's like, oh, cool. I'm going to be playing Necrons. And you just see him like laser focused. And the guy goes, oh, oh, like, like they like. Their oh, their nerd their nerd yeah. forces connected, and he's like, oh, okay, 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 okay. And it's like right. we need to talk. We need to talk. Where everyone else in the room is like. Not again. <laughs> yep. Not again. Like the rule has to be like, no one say Warhammer 40K around, around Henry Cavill or he's going to fucking just, he's going to drown us out. Like he's, yeah. they unplugged. <laughs> They're like, oh my God. He's like, yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. All, right. all right. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, 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 let's meet up after this. Let's talk some more. <laughs> I love it. Is he, is he going to, is he, he is part of yes the series, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. He's part yeah. of the series. I don't know if he's like, I know he's definitely going to be acting. I don't know if he's also a producer, but like he is like. I feel like he's got to have wiggled his way into an EP Super duper role. into it. And I think yeah. similar to The Witcher, where he was very much into the whole lore of that show. Yeah. And I think he stepped away, I think, due to creative differences with that is my kind of understanding of that. Like oh, he okay. didn't like where that was going. I could be wrong. I don't know. I'm a rumor monger. What do you want from me? Um, but with this, I mean, I don't think he's going to do it unless it's going to, you know, tickle his nerd fancy. So I, yeah. I trust that it's going to be relatively faithful, but faithful doesn't always mean successful. So, you know, balancing Very, that stuff, we've I seen think, that time and time again. Yeah, is, is always is always really, really tricky. So. So, Doug, you got to answer the question. What's something that, you know, is bad, but you love uh, desserts? I love all the desserts. Sugar. Like, I just want to eat. I just want to eat all that stuff all the time it's my biggest vice if you were given uh savory or sweet you're gonna go sweet sweet it's yeah. gotta be sweet for me listen i love savory i'll take it sure but it's always followed up by sweet i always gotta i gotta indulge on the sweetness of it all and it's it's a problem it's like a if you were problem. given something to snack on like for me i would choose mm. chips probably on, like nine depends. out of ten times it depends on for me the time of day okay and it depends on snacks most of the time i don't go sweet I usually go savory oh, okay. for snacking on stuff. Interesting. But, See, I thought it would be like, again, if you were given your druthers, like it would be like a bowl of M&Ms or something. When you say druthers, what do you mean by that? Like if you had your way, unimpeded. I've heard this word druthers before, and I feel like are you gonna? Like, do, I was going to do the same thing. I feel like it's like someone's trousers is what I think of. Uh, well, druthers person's brewing is preference the in the matter. Up. If I had my druthers, I'd prefer to be a writer. Yeah, one one's own way, choice, or preference. If cool. I had my druthers, I'm yeah, going so. to make a rule that we don't use that word. All right, I'd like that's to, your druthers, then, I, <laughs> sir. You are walking a fine line, a fine line, saying? sir, a fine line. Yeah, for whatever it is, I don't like that. I feel like that that word shouldn't mean that, and I don't like it. I don't. Is it like the word moist to you? Like you nah. hear druthers and you're like, ugh. See, uh, there's something about it is like, you know, <laughs> according to your druthers, I'm like, are you talking about my pants? I just think it seems like pants, like trousers or whatever. And I just, so when it's like, you know, if you had your druthers, I'm like, what are you what are you talking about my pants, bro? Like, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. No. So this is <coughs> he how walked out into the town square sans druthers. And that's he what got him a spanking. You know, <laughs> he got a spanking for that. 
<laughs> uh, yeah. So anyway, if I had my preference, um, you know, it's it's like, um, yeah, that's actually a really good good point. Like in general, um, oh, actually, now that I think about it, I'm thinking about the stuff I snack on. It's like even nowadays, it's fruit, which is sweet, which is sweet, right? It's a sweeter one. You don't yeah, have a lot of savory I, I think, I umami think, fruits. Uh, I think I'm, yeah, I, I think in, in those kind of cases, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I love some chips. Um, you know, I love some carbs. You and I have, you and I have wrecked uh, some chips and dip in our day. I'd say we wrecked more dip than chips, but, uh, you know. Accurate, accurate. <laughs> a whole tub of French onion dip got destroyed by accurate. the mind cap boys. I'll still, I'll still, if I'm having a, like a fuck it day, I'll still mm -hmm. treat myself to that every once in a while. And yeah. it does not last long. It's a it bad news bears when I have it, that. It, yeah. Tell you what, I got to spread those down. out. It's great going down, but when you just shit your druthers, it's just, you know, you regret every, every second of it, you know? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? You guys answer the question. What? What's? What, what? What do you know is good, but you hate it? And what do you know is bad, but you love it? And also, what do you think of the word druthers? Yeah. Let us know in uh, all the all the social medias and and in our Discord. Doug, tell them about our Discord. Yeah. I also feel like druthers is something that like is like a Missouri focused thing. He's like this guy, his druthers, thinking people should be equal. I don't like it. I don't like it. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, if you check the link in our description, you can find links to our Discord, to our Patreon, and to our merch at Redbubble. You can also uh, check out just YouTube.com slash Podcast if you're just listening to this. We post our video there of this of said podcast as well as uh, clips from our show and other fun stuff. And I also host a video game stream on Fridays at 8 p.m. Central. This past Friday, uh, I brought Natalie into the stream. And nice. we played stick fight the game and uh, had a really good time. We uh, beat the crap out of each other and it was great. It's, it's really fun to have her on. And this is kind of adorable to me, but uh, she told me yesterday who her new favorite show is my video game streams. So Aww. she likes to rewatch them. I'm also like, Hey, don't watch all of those. Cause some of those <laughs> don't watch. Be if it watching. says Jackbox, do not watch it. Cause you know, cause you know what she said the other day, not knowing what it meant. She goes, "I'm oh gonna boy. come." And I was like, "Oh no, oh no!" Jill heard her say, and Jill oh, goes, "What'd oh you say?" No. She goes, "Oh, I'm just saying what they're saying." And Jill goes, "Yeah, you, you can't say that. That's not. Uh, that's uh, you can't watch that stream anymore." Uh, and uh, yeah, so she's just repeating what she heard, and I was like, "Uh oh, that's it. Uh oh, it's a funny voice." Yeah, yeah. She's like, "I don't know what it means." It's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." Don't. Uh, don't say that. <laughs> don't say that. Because oh man, yikes. did you on times like that? Is it really hard to not just bust up laughing? Because you don't want to laugh and reinforce it, but so hard. Yeah, when she says stuff like that and just absolutely like nails it, or yeah. you know, just says something and you're like, I'm sorry, what? What'd you say? Oh, is that it's no? Yeah, so hard not to laugh because I also wanted to make her feel bad. Um, right? She said right. something. God, what'd she say the other day? She said, I think she said bitch the other day. And like, and Jill was like, whoa, 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 we can't say that. She started feeling real bad. She goes, Natalie, do you know what that means? She goes, no. She goes, it's okay. You don't know what it means. I'm telling you right now, don't say that because that won't be good. Okay. Right. You're fine. You're cool. It's whatever. This is why we don't, we don't let you swear because you don't know what these words mean. And they could right. really upset somebody. So please don't do yeah. that. <laughs> But you're you didn't use it correctly. Yeah. <laughs> you, Natalie, you've been using these correctly since you were yay high. Yeah. Okay. You, uh, you understand the context. You came out swinging with swear words. Good yes. for you. Way to go. You are yeah. you are your mother and daughter's child. Wait, no. Mother and father's child. There we go. Got there. That's the one. That's the one. Anyway, Friday's 8 p.m. Central. Uh, come hang out with me as I play some video games and have a good time and be a part of the show. You know? Yeah. 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 Well, hey there, friend. You look like you could use a good sit down with a friend. In this age of social media, depression, and spite for your fellow man, we provide a getaway from all of that. Friend Talk is bringing the friendship your way. Want to talk about the big game? Go long! 
Want to chat about the newest episode of TV? It was so good. Our friend talk friends will hype up, agree with, and be 100% on your side on all subjects you wish to speak about. For more info, check out realfriends.com. And when you use code podcast to check out, we'll do the first session nude. Yeah. We'll, we'll let anyone advertise on this show. That's right. You hear that, dick, dick pill guy? We'll let anybody advertise on this show. All right. You hear that? <laughs> the one that got away. <laughs> oh, the one that got away. So, uh, Justin, did you see the new Deadpool and Wolverine trailer today? I've watched it five times so far. Nice. I'm very excited for this. (laughs) I happen to have YouTube open when Jill just popped by my my office real quick. I go, oh, Uh good timing. And we watched it together. (laughs) I was like, look at this. And she was losing her shit at the song choice in the trailer. She was laughing so hard. And I didn't know this. Ryan Reynolds just posted uh it was uh was it 30 years ago on april 22nd 30 years ago or 40 years ago whatever it was uh like a prayer was released and started a like a three to eight week run on the billboard top 100 so like they so and i'm assuming because of this it'll probably get back on the Spotify charts and everything. So Probably. literally to the day, and he goes, we didn't, he goes, I swear to ba- G- uh, Marvel Jesus, we did not plan this. It wow. was just a, a thing that happened. So e- an even more fun thing, Deadpool breaking the fourth wall. That's so cool. But, I, uh, what did you think about it? I'm really looking forward to this movie. I think, I, um, I really, <clears throat> I was thinking about this just the other day where I, I am impressed with Ryan Reynolds because he loves this character. Mm-hmm. He loves it so much that he did X-Men Origins Wolverine where he played Deadpool and he hated that so much that he's like, no, we need to do this the right way. We're going to fix this. And he put a team together and they made Deadpool and it was wildly successful. And then they did Deadpool 2 and he's just been just adamant, you know, after Logan, you know, Hugh Jackman's like, I'm done. I'm no longer Wolverine. And then, of course... Fucking Ryan Reynolds finds a way, you know, to make it happen. That announcement for that was the best because it was so nonchalant as like Hugh Jackman just walking in the background going upstairs. He's like, hey, Hugh, you you want to play play Wolverine? Wolverine? He's like, "Okay, sure. Yeah. (laughs) And, you know, there's been so much hype about this. announced it so long ago and they just let it sit. And they were like, we're going to put that out there and we're going to walk away for a while. He's the king of just like getting people's attention. Like he knows how to do it. He he really, I, not to derail what you were saying, but I feel like I, I was thinking about this too, is that Ryan Reynolds for uh, a, a, a long time in his career, I feel like <clears throat> caught a lot of shit just because, oh, yeah. you know, he and he's made fun of it too in the Deadpool movies about, you know, like he's like critics were like, oh, he's just making it on his looks and, you know, there's, there's no talent here and talk about chewing the scenery and blah, blah, blah. Like, he just caught shit for different roles he chose and, and, and how the movie shook out. And I feel like when Deadpool came around, there was a turning point in his professional, in his creative life where he was, he, he locked into something. He found something. He's like, Oh, here's my creative voice. And I feel like most of what he's done since has been more in line with like his, his true creative voice, if you will. I don't know how else to say it, but you know what I mean when I say that, like his, like, like every, every uh, comedian has to find their voice. They always talk about like, you know, you start out and you're in impersonating someone else until you find what it is that you, your point of view and, and how you approach things. And I feel like he, he locked into that with Deadpool and it just started opening up. Cause like this new movie, if looks incredible too, the one with John Krasinski, I can't, Natalie wants to see that movie. I can't wait to take her to it. I'm so excited for this. But again, yeah. and you could argue it's very similar sounding characters that he plays. It's the sarcastic, but it fucking works. And I it like does, it. It, just, it, it works for him. Yeah. All of his advertising, maximum effort marketing, the Mint Mobile stuff, the the aviation gin. He, like, I, I, you know, we send each other stuff on Instagram whenever he has a new commercial out for one of the products. He doesn't that that team he's put together does not miss. Yeah, he's very very locked into what he's doing right now, and I love it for him. I think I mean he he embodies Deadpool in a lot of ways, and that he just like 
he he's always like winking at you. Right. Which yeah. I think, you know, to some people, they find that annoying or obnoxious. But I'm like, I like it because he just doesn't take himself too seriously. No, he's a he's beautiful man, successful man. And I'm like, too many of those people exist where they're like, they just, they they take themselves way too seriously. And I just see him right. just be like, eh, fuck it. You know, like, right. I, I enjoy that. I enjoy that about him. I find I find the, those people to be very charming. <clears throat> the people that can Agreed. make fun of themselves and, and just, I don't know. It's, it's, it's very enjoyable, but what I've enjoyed about all of the Deadpool movies is they are incredibly silly and funny, but there's always a lot of heart in them. Yeah. And this yep. one seems like there's going to be a lot of that, both with Deadpool and also with Logan. And, yes. uh, I'm also curious because, you know, minor spoilers that the TVA is involved. If you've watched Loki, you know, mm-hmm. I think that's how they're bringing all this together. Um, yeah. And so I think it's, I don't know. I'm excited. I'm super pumped to see that. I think it's going to be really fun. And um, I don't know, man. I haven't been excited for a Marvel movie in a while. <laughs> I know. This is, I, I had the same thought. I'm like, Doug and I used to geek the fuck out every time one of these things dropped. And I feel like we really haven't mentioned anything to each other for a while and this is like I. This is the first one. I'm like, I. We need to talk about this. <laughs> like, this when? Is, when? What this was is cool. the last yeah. Marvel movie that you saw? Uh, I mean, I. I think I'm. Sans the series, I'm caught up on the movie. So it must have been. What came out after? Th- See, this that this is the problem <laughs> is that I can't remember what came out last. You know what I mean? Um, Marvel. I movies. think the most recent one was the Marvels. Uh, I want to say you're right. Yeah. Uh, Marvel movies in order. Oh, and God, I saw the Marvels. It be easier to fucking find this. It was fine. Uh, I watched yeah. it with Natalie. It was okay. I, I thought it was it was fun. It was enjoyable, but you know, it didn't uh, it didn't get me all riled up or anything like that. But it was I wasn't mad that I saw it. It was I saw it on streaming. You know, I don't think it deserved all the shit that it got. Uh, I think people also no, didn't I, realize yeah. that that was in the midst of the strike. So they couldn't promote anything. <laughs> and then right. it came out and people were like, ah, women suck. It's like, uh, I mean, come on. They couldn't really do much to promote this movie. Right. Yeah. So phase five began with Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumadia, which was hot garbage. garbage. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Good. Was, was, yeah, it was, that was good. Um, what was the oh yeah Thor Love and Thunder yeah it was that was bad and, and then yeah then the Marvels and then Deadpool Wolverine Captain America Brave New World will come out after that and Phase Five will conclude with the Thunderbolts Phase Six going to be Fantastic Four Blade and then Avengers Five and Six I don't I don't know if Blade's going to come out man <laughs> you think you think they're gonna they've had trouble eighty six that one they've had trouble with like the 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 back end stuff with writers I think with directors oh really I think they've struggled with it so I'm like I don't know man. <laughs> interesting i don't know about that one and uh the thunderbolts i could give a shit about that one man i mean hey i'm open to it but i'm like don't care and now that fucking uh jonathan majors isn't gonna be playing fucking kang i'm like what are y'all gonna be doing and he's contracted he's the only one that can play kang the conqueror so it's like that's how they did that they actually wrote like he had it contracted that's in, part so of they his couldn't, contract like- no one can replace him he's the only one that can play kang Look, <clears throat> smart from an actor standpoint with how Marvel opens things up in different universes and you can have someone, oh, I've shifted faces. and Like, yeah. smart from, from his standpoint or his, his agent standpoint. But man, talk about backing yourself into a fucking corner yeah, uh, from a no, Disney no, standpoint. No one probably could have seen that one coming. <clears throat> and now it's like, great, no. uh, as it's Avengers, uh, Kang, uh, well, now it's not Kung it's Fu's Avengers. your butt or whatever it's called, you know, it's Avengers five. <laughs> and then it's, it's, and then Avengers six is still Avengers secret wars. So yeah, which yeah. is going to be so, great because like, like having to fucking pivot an entire cruise ships worth of like content, like, no, nope, that, this is the storyline now. It's just going to be a loose thread out there, you know, it's, as quantum yeah, media ends. Yeah. The end, the end, the end scene in, in quantum media is like all these Kangs gathered together to basically take over and they're going to be like, ah, they just, they, they were tired. They took a nap. Can I throw something out there? How wonderful would, would it be if they used Deadpool and Wolverine to wrap that up? You know what? 
if they be surprised, they're like, we're just going to close like, that loop. It's associated with the TVA, so I mean, it's possible, right? You know, I'm just saying, like, what if Deadpool and Wolverine just like maybe they have to find a, a specific universe? They come out of one and they're just covered in blood, and they're like, that was a lot of Kangs, and they, yeah, right. and that's it. And then somehow they just close the two it of them pulled that off, <laughs> took everyone out. Yeah, right. That would be that would be very in line with Deadpool to just be like, took care of it. Don't worry. What a fun challenge. Not one I would want to take on, but what no. if they were able to find a way to close this off that was like legendary, that was cool, that was amazing, and future generations will be like, oh man, that was such a cool thing. You're like, do you know why that happened? <laughs> do you want to know why that pulled off? Because the guy that played <laughs> Kang got fucking arrested for he assaulting a woman. Big time, yeah. <laughs> and they were like, we can't do this, but we had him locked <clears throat> in. Because we you hear stories about that shit all the time where like something goes sideways and they're like we pulled it off a lot of times it doesn't go well right right <laughs> but you know it's, it ends up being really cool when you're like oh shit that worked out great like the jaws shark that shark was supposed to be in there way more but right. it made it even better that they couldn't find it because it didn't work and they had to keep shooting us like whoa it's so suspenseful it's like this wasn't what we planned yeah thank god for our but- editor <laughs> Because the shark looks like shit. <laughs> I'm saying, like, if there's any movie in this lineup that's able to address this, I feel like the with the least bit of heavy lifting, like any of the other ones, I feel like you'd really have to write it into the storyline. Yeah. With Deadpool, I feel like you could it it would again. It still takes skill, but I feel like that's probably the most uh, forgiving. Yeah. A vehicle to to retcon something in. Yeah, it'd be you fun. Know? I'd love yeah. to see them. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we'll see. I, I'm, the Easter eggs that I really that I really thoroughly enjoyed were um the the tw- when they were fighting the 20th century fox I did uh, see that. stone thing buried in in the in the desert. I, I did was like, see that. What a beautiful nod to I was like, Oh man. X-Men coming over for uh, Disney buying the studio shuttering it and taking all of the properties back. Wonderful. Just I, That was such a quick thing in the back of my mind. I didn't stop and revisit it. I go, I think that was a 20th Century Fox logo, if I'm not Absolutely mistaken. Absolutely was. Absolutely <laughs> was. And then uh, uh, the other one was uh, the Ant-Man. Yes. Ant-Man's giant dead body <laughs> opening up, and you can just see the teeth of the yes. skull inside, and someone, that's where the, the evil, the, yeah. the villain descends from. And I'm like, he's got... He's got access to anything he wants now, yeah. and they can just write it in, you know. That's and the cocaine line at the very end, the button on the trailer yes. was just, yeah, yeah, the, so the, good. The fact that he's just referencing uh, in the original, the trailer before that, he's like, "Oh my god, I'm Marvel Jesus," you know, I'm just Marvel like he Jesus. he knows exactly what he is. Like, I'm not used to begging, but yeah. Disney is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think I think it'll be fun. I think it, yeah. you know. As a standalone film, I think it'll be really enjoyable. Um, yeah. I think it'll be nice and refreshing. I don't know. Honestly, like, I've stopped caring about the Marvel Universe. I hate to say it. As I wear my Marvel shirt, you know. Uh, yeah, right. I just, I've, I, it, it pains me to say that, but I'm just like, like I've said before, I've got the Infinity Saga. That's all I need. Like That's all we need. Yeah. That's all I'll ever and need. I, I've, and it, in, I, I would uh, parrot that, like, and, and we've got the Deadpool 1 and 2 on mm-hmm. on the other side of the aisle that we can like I feel like that together to kind of wraps up that's I'm good anything yeah. else that happens eh, what are you gonna do yeah I'm, I'm happy like, with those whatever I, yeah. I think I heard some some folks talking the other day they're like the problem with the Marvel Cinematic Universe is that it's becoming like the comic books now and that yeah. it's getting so overly convoluted and crazy that now they have to like reboot <laughs> mm-hmm like they do in the comics when things just get just batshit. They're like, cool, we're going to start big. over yeah. now. Like we're going to have to do that with the movies because they have some is, world ending event that just like it's like it rebirths. OK, now we've got the new thing, which honestly, I'm like, let's just call it. Let's just call it like it, the problem see. with that is it's too big of a fucking moneymaker, Doug. You know, capitalism's taken over. Like I understand there's, that. There's no but, way they'll ever call this. I mean, I, I know they've got fucking rides at Disney. You know, they got to build. Yeah. And there's no way they're going to call this, but I'm like, unfortunately, I don't know, man. I, th- I think, I think it's gotten so big that I don't think people are going to stomach a full on reboot. You know, I mean, oh, I, don't know. God, I, I, th- no. I think the, my, th- this was always my fear is that they were going to lose faith and then they were going to get X-Men and then X-Men are going to fucking fall flat on their face again Yep, because yep. 
they they came in just too late. They came yeah. in too late. You know, yeah, because there's a there's a the end credit sequence at the end of Marvels is very clearly X Men. You know, so it's like and you got remind me. Did you watch the Marvels? There? Yeah, I did. I just okay. can't remember. So the, the end, end credit sequence. Uh, what's her name? Uh, oh yes, yes, yes. Monica Rambo. Yeah, Rambo's uh, yeah. like you know sees her mom, mom but then she's yeah. in a different universe, and Beast comes out to treat her. It's and it's CGI like, Kelsey Grammer. Yeah. yeah, it's like oh, I'm like hey, I was like hey, that's Beast, and I was like. <laughs> Oh, this is unfortunate. It's getting here too late. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. Like we we finally had a chance to have like a Logan was like arguably the only like rock solid X Men uh, based mm-hmm. friend a movie. Uh, we finally had a chance to to, to kind of get. I feel like it's back in the hands of people who can do something, who truly can shape this into something. Yeah. And it just came a decade too late. <laughs> and at the same time, I'm like, I'm glad they didn't rush it. You know. But, mm-hmm. you know, I, I I respect the fact they were slow playing it and finding the way to sort of weave it in through different things. But uh, right. I, I'm afraid. Now, we could be wrong. Who knows? Like, maybe, I'm happy to eat my maybe words. Dead, maybe Deadpool and Wolverine is a little bit of a just a little bit of oxygen injected into this this these dying embers. Like maybe so, this man. rekindles the flame. I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. Let us know. What do you think? Did you see the trailer? Are you excited for the film? What do you think is going to happen? Yeah. Cool. I will say the rumor mill is very, very abuzz right now. Like obviously with this trailer coming out, it's just it's cranking full speed. The the one rumor I thought was was one of the better ones that I heard because Blake Lively and Ryan Reynolds are really good friends in real life with Taylor Swift. Mm -hmm. Like their kids call her Aunt Auntie Taylor. No, like they. Oh yeah. No. So there is there is a Marvel superhero who is a pop star. No. And I don't want to see <clears throat> Jubilee, Justin. It's no, 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 no. Do, do, you'd be lucky to see Jubilee. Uh, <laughs> you wish <laughs> she she would come in and she would defeat Kang. That's how they do it. That's how that's, <laughs> beep, beep, that's how they do it. And celebrate <laughs> at the same time. Sparkles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, no, but so they're they're saying that there's there's a p- possibility because at some event, Sean Levy, uh, Ryan Reynolds, Blake Lively, and Taylor Swift are all uh, photographed together, and so. They're saying that potentially she comes in as this as a guest spot. And then a lot of people are saying that Blake Lively might come in as Miss Deadpool because there's a scene, I think it was in the teaser where uh, a Deadpool glove is holding Uzis and he uses Desert Eagles. Miss got, Deadpool, I need you to stop. I don't want to know Miss these details. Miss Deadpool uses Uzis. I, I don't want to hear these details. I so don't they're saying think maybe about Blake these. Lively. I'm I don't, just saying. I don't want to hear it. I don't, I don't like this. You I don't, don't want to go down the, uh, the old road? I don't want to go down that road and I don't want to listen. I said this before. I'll say it again. Congratulations, Taylor Swift. You are successful. I don't want to see you in Marvel. I don't. I don't want you in my universe, in my world. I don't want to you listen. You said you've sworn this 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 world off, Doug. You're done with this world. I know, but I, I don't. She keeps forcing herself into my news, into my world. There is a book fair embrace- at my daughter's school, and there's a whole section dedicated to Taylor Swift. They you are having have parties. The They're having stuff. the eras to her parties. Like for I'm just, I don't want them in my life. Doug, we got to give in. They're going to wear you down. The next no. shirt you're going to buy is going to be a Taylor Swift shirt, or maybe one maybe one gets gifted to you. Maybe one just shows up. <laughs> I might have to talk to I might have to talk to Hag. Yeah, go talk to Hag. I might have to see if he's got uh, if he wants to spend a little bit more money on you. <sighs> My God, I'm not. Won't do it. I won't do it. <laughs> That's where you draw the line. I won't Rampage, do it. okay, but <laughs> but Swift merchandise. No, 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 no. You know no. what? If Taylor Swift was in Rampage, I'd I'd, I'd approve that message. Rampage two. Ever be in that? <laughs> Rampage two. Eris Boogaloo. There we go. Speaking of movies, this was interesting. Uh, the movie. Civil War, an AI, mm-hmm. not AI, not Jesus. Captain America. A twenty four. Sorry, yeah, it's like A twenty four. Yeah, not that. I love someone watch the trailer for this movie and they're like, "This movie looks like absolute dog shit." There's no Captain America. There's no Tony Stark. <laughs> like none of the Marvel characters. In it. This is just lazy. <clears throat> <laughs> it's just lazy. Um, this this movie definitely yeah. got my interest, and I, I I watched the trailer for it a while ago, and I got fucking depressed. Oh um, yeah, for I was sure. like, I don't know if I can watch this movie, 
but I've heard some pretty high praise for it. And it's an A24 film. So like, that's also like, it's, it's got, right in your wheelhouse right now. Yeah. In my wheelhouse. Drew if you're not familiar the with theater, this, it's essentially and, about modern day America where a civil war is taking place. And you apparently follow some reporters as they travel the country, trying to report on what they're seeing and what's going on. And it seems really heavy based on our environment. I was like, Ugh, I don't know, man, but I don't know if I'm going to go to the theater to see it. Um, but when it comes out on streaming, I, I'll definitely check it out because it's also directed <clears throat> by the same guy who did Ex Machina. So, yes, uh, Alex Garland. But I kind of want to go to the theater to see this one. I, I think yeah. I think I might make a pilgrimage out to see it. Drew messaged me immediately after he got out. And he told me he goes, "You have to fucking see this film." Okay, and I was like, "I was wow, okay." I he came out real real high praise for it. So, and he said it was a lot less about. Um, the political like d- dissonant state that we're in. And he was, it's, it's much more about wartime journalism. Yeah. That's, that's I was like, I actually oh, listened okay. to an interview with the director on oh, did you? Uh, pod save America. And um, it was a great, he's, this is a really great conversation and just hearing him talk about how, you know, which actually I think leads into what we're going to talk about, which is, yeah. um, you know, a lot of people were asking him like, you know, feedback was like, well, what, what started the civil war in this film and stuff like that. And he goes, that's not the point. It's kind of like, you know, you watch right. a zombie movie. It's like, well, how did it start? It's like, that's not the point. The point Doesn't of this is yeah. you're following these characters. You're following their environment. You're seeing how this world is unfolding based on the circumstances, um, which I think is really, really interesting. Now, part of the ad campaign for this on Instagram involves some AI generated images, uh, which I think uh, created some controversy. And basically what this shows is just images of different areas of um, America uh, that basically look like they've been ravaged by war. Um, you see like military, you know, convoys in different areas. Um, and like shattered uh, Las Vegas sphere. Mm-hmm. You see Refugee like Chicago, Chicago river, Chicago river. There's a, uh, I think it was this, I don't even know where that is. Um, yeah. And Some so wreckage in Miami. Yeah, that's what it was, Miami. So essentially, like, you know, none of these images were actually, they almost look like movie posters in a lot of ways, but they're not. Right. Uh, but they're used to like, um, and it, the, the, the caption out of this is America the Beautiful, and they're just showing all these different things. But uh, apparently, a lot of folks got upset because these were AI generated images. And if you look closely in some of them, you can find the flaws. Like apparently some cars have like too many doors, um, like the Miami one, Miami, Jesus, who am I? Miami one, uh, one of the cars has like, you know, three doors, which is like on right. one side, which is like, no, that's not how it works. Um, and there's some other things like that. Um, if you're familiar with Chicago, the Marina Towers aren't on the right side. Of, like there's a, a weird split in the river that that's not yeah. actually where they sit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what what did you think about that when you when you saw that? <clears throat> I thought, I guess what I didn't understand, and this is kind of the the way that I wanted to approach my question to you to see maybe I'm not thinking of it the right way. I didn't understand what the purpose was. Like, I don't understand why use AI when you could have had, when you could have had someone go in and create these images, like a graphic designer, someone who specializes in this, they could go in and they could actually create these images and they could create them sans the issues that they had like the one that there's one that uh there's a a a boat of marines uh behind what is supposed to probably be like a swan paddle boat but it's just a giant swan like it looks very odd like half swan half boat that's for sure it's back half is definitely boat (laughs) yeah but it's just it but it it looks wrong (laughs) just you know like so i feel like i don't understand like why i just don't understand why use ai to do this for a marketing campaign what do you gain what do you gain by it i don't like like, am i missing something here like what was i think it was unnecessary i think i'm not upset by it i just think it's unnecessary i had the opposite reaction in that i didn't even notice that this was ai which is probably indicative of maybe the problem because i looked at the stuff i'm like oh that looks really cool that looks like really intense like this seems like it's capturing the film really really well i didn't look that closely at it but i was able to be like oh yeah that's chicago and i kept moving and i was like oh yeah that looks pretty spooky you know like just just enough to be like 
Got it. Which, yeah. which I think is what AI is really good at right now. Like good point. I, yeah. looking at the, the, the Miami wreckage, like if someone hadn't called out, if someone said, Hey, let me know if this is AI, maybe I'd be able to know, but I would have noticed the car with three doors on it. Like I, yeah. you know, some of the stuff you've I, got to pinch and zoom for that. Like I right. had to, the, yeah. the Swan thing. I'm like, Oh yeah, that's a boat. I could tell the back half of it was like a, a boat and whatever. And I'm like, cool, I guess. Like I also don't recognize where all these places are, but I feel like it captured what it wanted to capture. And that this is America, that all these lands, all these particular landmarks that are overrun with strife and military as there's a war going on. And I'm like, cool. It, it, it got it for me. And I'm like, I understood. I got it. Um, but, um, you know, to answer your question, why do this? Well, because it's fucking cheap. That's why. Because it didn't cost them anything to pull this shit off of, you know, an AI generator image generator yeah. so like it was yeah really fucking easy to do so that's why because <laughs> they didn't do this as like a like a massive like this was specifically for instagram they did this right. so again these weren't like this is the movie poster because then i'm like all right you guys are asking for trouble if you're like check out our movie poster <laughs> if you're like whoa 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 this is gonna be on a billboard that looks weird um yeah. and and so i guess you know had no one told me about this and i guess that's also like i said earlier that's maybe part of the problem is that because this isn't identified as something that's ai generated that it can be deceiving uh, because at quick glances i'm like like i said i'm like oh this looks i feel like this is capturing it but um when i found out they were ai generated i didn't it didn't bother me but i'm also like ooh, i didn't notice that that's possibly yep. problematic I'm not, yeah, I'm not upset at the fact that, like, again, like, I'm, I, I, I know I, something felt off about the images, but, I, like, not enough, again, same with you, like, not enough for me to be like, oh, wait a second, I was just like, these seem very, like, I don't know, glossy or, like, I just, something felt weird, but I just don't understand, I, I, for me, it's the, it's what is the purpose of, of, of this, I just, it, it seems like, this seems like something that someone would do if they were doing a student film or or an independent film and they were hard up for cash. Mm -hmm. If this is a studio flick that's, you know, being produced by A24 and it's got, you know, whatever the budget was that's behind it, it just seems odd to me that you're going to utilize AI unless it unless it fits into the theme of the movie, which I don't believe that it does. Mm -hmm. um, then maybe I'd be like, oh, you're. It's a, it's a, it's furthering the narrative of the film because you're using this thing that you're commenting on in the film. If that was the case, eh, maybe, you know, mm -hmm. I could, I could see that. I just, I don't know. <clears throat> I'm still, I like, I'm still not fully embracing AI for the creative fields yet. Yeah. And like this, this is part of it for me of like, I just, why it just feels, it feels well, the lazy thing with me is that me. Like, like, I think it, it actually, it looks pretty good unless you just start going in and with the scrutiny of it and being like, wait a second, this, this seems yeah. off, you know? Um, and so if I, I don't know, this is, this is terrible reasoning. So I'm just going to state this up front. So okay. everyone, you know, feel free to bend me over the barrel for this. But um, if this had looked like, some of the really bad AI art that you and I have seen. Like the Budweiser like, commercials. Civil like, War. You're like, whoa, okay. Um, oh my God, it's yeah, a like, Civil War. It's like someone trying to eat spaghetti, you know, in Las Vegas in ruins. <laughs> yeah. It's like, wait a minute. This is, this is fucking weird. <laughs> yeah. um, I'd be like, okay, guys, uh, you didn't even try, um, which I've seen from a lot of things. So this seems a little bit more intently crafted. And... <laughs> At the end, is of the, it James Dean and Tupac in there? What oh is, my God! Look at them; yeah. they're in Miami in the background. Weird. I think if um, I, I don't know, like the the fact that I don't know, man, I'm torn on this. Like I, I'm really in like a neutral spot where I'm like it doesn't bother me a whole lot, um, yeah. because I feel like it gets the it, it really does capture the message. But they also could have <laughs> hired someone to do this, but also they just fucking pulled this shit out. It was cheaper for them to do it. You know, and I don't know, man, like, I don't know. I'm sure I'll get some shit for this and that's fine. I'm, I'm open to, to hearing people's thoughts about this. The fact that a graphic designer didn't get an opportunity to get this and get everything right, I think is a shame. Right. Um, sure. I, I'll, I will say, too, like the, the one in Miami, uh, like, like, again, outside of those, like the three doors, like it, it looks it, it looks good. Like yeah. I, it does. I, I'll fully admit, like it. It looks 
chaotic. It looks dystopian. It looks, you know, uh, like you you can you you can elicit the emotion of like, yeah, yeah, something some shit went down here. Mm -hmm. Um, I will say the one with the swan boat just looks kind of silly. It looks like that. That's what I'm saying. It just looks like they're hunting a swan, a very large swan. Well, even if it was like... Like a swan out of Rampage. Even if that was clearly a swan boat, obviously that's related to some landmark that I'm not familiar with, but I'd be like, there's no one in the boat. You know what I mean? So they're just like, fucking got it. Hey, Ken, we got this fucking swan, man. Fucking blow it up. Like I'm like, okay. All right. Yeah. The other yeah. thing is like, I don't even know where's, what's this one? It looks like um, some sort of Arc de Triomphe. Where the fuck is this place? Is it like, New York or France? It's one of the two, right? It can't be France because this is the American Civil War. So Cool. Like, that's New York then. Yeah. So like, yeah, th- this one, I'm like, all right. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, all this sort of shit's going down. Miami makes sense. Uh, Chicago makes sense. Although I got to say those ferries in the water, I'm like, those just look like people going on architecture cruises, you know? Like, Yeah, I didn't, I didn't get, <laughs> they described it as, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, migrant f- ferries or something or what are they? Uh, I don't know, man. What do they have? It was, uh, where is it? In, in some, in something that they sent, uh, that we sent each other. Oh, refugee boats. That was what, oh, refugee okay. boats on the Chicago river. Yeah, I would not have just said refugee boats. I had the same thought. I'm like, oh yeah, those are the architecture boats. Like those yeah, are the I mean they're pretty the full. Wendella architecture. They're, they're pretty full, probably full, yeah. more full than you know your, your classic one. But I'm like, eh. or is this a scene from The Dark Knight when the Joker is yeah. trying to blow up the fairies? Yeah, right. Yeah. So <clears throat> not perfect. But it was also no. interesting. They said in this article from uh, Collider that uh, Marvel's Secret Invasion didn't watch that show. A series featured an AI generated title sequence. To the disappointment of many viewers, and recently the horror film Late Night with the Devil, which looks great, attracted criticisms for its use yeah. of AI-generated title cards for its fictional '70s late night talk show. I, I get, I don't, I get, I, I understand that's probably taking away from someone being able to spend some time creating those. Um, I don't know, man. I again, I'm probably going to get shit for this. Um, if you can make something with AI-generated titles and it looks good, I mean. If you, uh, if it wasn't stated, this is AI. Would if it's obviously bad, people are like, "Hey, man, right? What the fuck are you doing?" But if it looks good, this is where I go back to my thought of like AI is a tool. You know, we, we've got to be able to use these tools that are available to us to keep doing what they're doing. I also understand Marvel has no business with their funds to be using that sort of stuff. Like they have it at their disposal to do that. I get that. Right. It's a weird thing where all these thoughts are conflicting with one another. I know I I I'm not, I'm not making heads or tails of anything. (laughs) I understand where I, I, I I understand the, 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 the conundrum that you're like the, the push pull that you're in. Like, cause it makes sense from a logical standpoint. It does make sense to me. Like I, if you are like for, for Drew and I making something on a shoestring budget, Mm -hmm. if we can make a, a, title sequence similar to like secret invasion i thought was a decent title sequence like mm-hmm. if i if we had something like that in one of our films it would look fantastic for disney yeah. to have it okay if we were able to get something of that level for that cost uh, that, i mean that would be that can that can be a huge game changer for a, a very small film right so i i get it in that regard but i don't know is there some threshold that we should be putting like if your budget is x and above then you can't you like I I don't know what the answer is I'm not yeah. I don't necessarily think I have an answer but like I and yeah it's a tool I, I understand what you're saying as as a tool but my my thing always goes back to it's a tool that eventually will just straight up replace jobs and for people to be like well you know we need uh it would uh, prompt engineers I was like go oh, fuck yourself prompt engineers like. You need you need you need people who can type things into a search bar. Fuck you, prompt engineer. Like yeah, I know, man. I'm sorry. That's not. And are we just going to force everyone to say, okay, that's what the jobs are now? You got to be a prompt engineer. I'm a sound prompt engineer. I'm a graphics prompt engineer. I'm a video prompt engineer. Like, is that what the jobs are? I don't know, man. I don't know who's but who's like, better at describing things. The the. I don't know what you want to call it, the innovative side of me or whatever. Like the the futurist is like, hey man, it is what it is. This is here. It's not going away. Yeah. Fucking get on board or get left behind. Like I'm not I saying say that makes it the right. Fuck out of it. I'm not I saying say that regulate makes the fuck out of it. I'm not saying that regulate makes it, it right. The ground. But 
at the same time, I don't know, man. I, I'm also waiting for the first truly amazing thing that's created via AI. I haven't seen it yet. It's so probably not. It's probably just around the corner. Yeah. Um, something that's, you know, it's used. It's like 3D. Using 3D as a storytelling device, not just a reason to pay three extra dollars to see a fucking movie for the glasses, right? Like yeah. a true intentionally created thing that adds value to something. I'm waiting to see that right now. There's a lot of stuff being tested out there and, and I don't know, man, I have mixed feelings on this stuff and, uh, and it, I, and I'm sorry if anyone's upset by it or whatever. I, I just, I don't know, man, I'm trying to, I'm trying to process it as this stuff is coming in. Cause part of me is like, I don't know, looks fine to me. And then the other part of me is like, yeah, but it also looks fine to me. And I didn't know. I think that's the part I get hung up on is like, I didn't know. So it seems like someone's trying to do sleight of hand. And I don't like that. Well, that's the part. I and I like. think that's, that's the, the, the cynic, the cynic in me. That's the part that I'm like, when you finally do see that first really good thing that was generated by AI, mm-hmm. there's, I mean, it's, it's a Pandora's box, right? You yeah. can't, you can't close that. Cause then, oh my God, we got this footage of, you know, the president, uh, what's the black mirror episode? The president fucking the pig, right? Yeah. Like, was, did he fuck a pig? Or I mean, was that I think we're like, all waiting for that to happen. But that's what I'm saying. Like, I feel like that's that to me, that's the larger looming thing of like regulate the fuck out of this, because yeah. unless you unless you do like reality will reality itself will become fractured. I'm and also I, dumb. There's and no see, coming back from that. You're cynical. I'm naive in the fact that people are only going to use this for good. Like that's, they're all going to have good intentions, which is entirely stupid. So like, you know, I'm like, well, I mean, this is good. But if you look at their motives, it's like, well, uh, I got to cut someone out of my budget because I was able to pull this out in uh, like 30 minutes. And I'm like, efficiency, great intentions, bad. Like, you know, it's yeah. So Robin Williams had a great, a great line in one of his specials. He was talking about, he's like, if we can't, uh, uh, human nature, if we can't fuck it, we'll kill it. Yeah. I think in the same regard, if we can't fuck it, if we can't turn it into porn, then we'll weaponize it. Oh, don't worry. It's the same thing. It's being made into porn. So. Well, absolutely. But I'm saying like, if we can't stick, if we can't fuck this thing, we're going to weaponize it. And that's going to be the next thing that comes around. And I I just, I don't know. I, that element of it it is very apropos for this film. Yes, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let us know what you think. Uh, if you know, if if you've seen these and you 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 take a look at them, you're like, yeah, this fucking worries me. Or you're like, I don't see what the big deal is. Let us know. We'd love to hear more about it. Absolutely. <clears throat> now it's time. You got the questions. We right got way. the answers. All you do is ask. Practical. 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 Ask Practical Doug. So if you've never been here for Ask Practical Doug, welcome. We've been waiting for you. Uh, Practical Doug is a small Doug that lives inside of Big Doug, and Practical Doug guides Big Doug through all of life's quandaries, its quagmires, its questions, its mysteries. And you have the option to ask or the opportunity, the option and the opportunity to ask Practical Doug a question yourself. On any social media, uh, you can hashtag Ask Practical Doug if you tag mind gap podcast and then on our discord there's a channel dedicated to ask practical doug where you can get on there and ask a question and if it's good enough we might read it on the uh, on the show you can have practical doug answer it live but if we don't have anyone who submitted a great question we go back to our favorite place which is the subreddit am i the asshole because there's never uh there's never a, a shortage of people asking practical doug questions on there and this person a Ab- abalone hot abalone hot five seven one three wants to know am i the asshole for eating the food in my co-workers fridge they're gonna have to do some big lifting on this one doug because i already have my <laughs> this based off the title i have my feelings so my co-worker 32 female asked me a 28 female to dog sit for her for the weekend while she and her husband said spent the weekend away they paid me 150 dollars and I left just this morning. I've been there since Thursday. Okay. Doesn't say what day they're writing this, but <laughs> well, they okay. said the weekend. So I'm assuming Thursday, Friday, Monday? Saturday, Sunday. Okay. While I was there, I ate some of their food. <clears throat> they didn't have much in the fridge, but they had a few packs of frozen vegetables that you can microwave. There were, ugh, there were a total of like eight of them. And 
<laughs> and three just days, gross disdain for that's hilarious. Ugh. Ugh. Uh, and three uh, and the three days I was there, I ate three. My coworker just texted me and asked if I ate their food. I said yes, and she kind of started going off on me about how she was saving that food for her lunches, etc. She also asked me to pay her fifty dollars back since she paid me extra so I could order food instead of eating hers. I feel like this is so ridiculous. I told her I would just buy her some frozen vegetables, and she said to forget it and sent me her Venmo information. I see her every day at work. Is it worth it for $50? Am I the asshole for eating her food while I was dog-sitting for her? Uh, Wibida, if I don't pay her back. Would I be the asshole? Uh, would I be the asshole? Uh, edit, while I was there. <laughs> I didn't eat anything else. I don't eat breakfast, and I supplement my lunches with a protein shake. I just had her vegetables. Practical Doug, what's up with this? All right, so here's what I would this say. This is a loaded fucking thing. Isn't it? You read that, and you're like, man, you're eating your coworker's food? How dare you? Out of the fridge? But you are, yeah. So, in short, to summarize this, um, you are an asshole for eating their food and not replacing it. I think a simple thing would have, like, if you would have eaten that, to replace whatever you've eaten, I think is fair. That's fine. Yep. Um, outside of that, um, I don't think I would give a shit. Now, g- granted, if like it depends, because if I had a plan for the week, right? Like, hey, I'm I'm planning my lunches for the week yes. and stuff like that, and someone <clears throat> ate a key component of that, I'd be like, whoa, 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 that sucks. Now I have to go make a trip, right, to the store to replace that. That kind of sucks, right? So it's kind of a dick move to eat their food, not replace it. And not tell them like they had to be like, yo, did you eat my food? And you're like, yeah, I did. It's like, hey, like to you, it may not be that big of a deal. They're like, ah, I'm just eating some frozen vegetables to which Justin says, yuck. Um, But you don't know what they have planned for that sort of stuff. So I think at the very least um, you let them know and either you leave them some cash to uh, replace that or you go and replace it yourself Mm -hmm. uh, because it is kind of a dick move to eat someone else's stuff. And then, uh, you know, not replace it, not tell them about it. On the flip side, uh, I don't think they should pay this person 50 bucks for eating three bags of vegetables. Um, I think that's nonsense. Also, this seems like a lack of communication on both sides. So, like, I gave you an extra 50 bucks so that you could order food while you were there. That clearly wasn't communicated. Was that communicated? Right. Yeah, so there was obviously miscommunication there on what's what. So um, they're kind of an asshole, um, but I don't. For the sake of like what they're asking, like for the whole thing, I don't think they're really an asshole. Like I would say no, but there's like a there's an asterisk there in that they kind of are, but not 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 as much as this person who's accusing them of doing is thinks they are. What do you think? I will say abalone hot five seven one three needs to uh, reconfigure their diet because I'm worried about that I'm worried they're iron deficient. I'm worried that they're like something they're not getting. I don't eat breakfast. I have a protein shake at lunch and I have a bag of vegetables at dinner. You're I just I don't think you're getting dude. The their farts have got to be just awful. It's just not good. It's awful. Just not good. Bland soggy vegetables for dinner. <laughs> hey, I'm no. sure they put some seasoning on it. This person does not use seasoning. Diet. This is this, this is a, is, this is a this white person, person, right? This, this person puts lady. salt on and goes, "Ooh, it's spicy. <laughs> Ooh, um, too much spice. <laughs> Ooh, I better have more of my protein shake. I better um, have some milk to get this spice out of my mouth." Uh, so I, I'll, I'll say this: I do think that I would say in this instance, and usually I feel like we side with the person who's writing this. I think this person's the asshole okay. because let's say I was coming over to watch your house. Mm-hmm. Right. If you did, or let's, let's flip it. Cause I know what I would do. If, if you came over to, to watch my house and we left, I, the first thing out of my mouth would be help yourself to anything in the cabinet or the fridge. Like, you know, whatever yeah. you find, eat it. That needed to, that should have been discussed. I, right. I dig, like you said, communication right at the top, either, Hey, look, we meal prep. We've got things measured out. If you, I gave you some extra money. If you need to get something, please don't touch anything in the cabinets. Just order whatever you want, you know, and uh, blah, blah, blah. And thanks for watching the house. That should have, if that conversation never happened to me, if I was coming to your house now, the presumption would be, well, Doug did not say I could eat anything in his house. So I'm not just going to go helping myself and rummaging around. I'll order in, I'll make a quick trip to the store and grab a little 
I'll put it in the corner of the fridge and that's my meals for, I'll, I'll go buy three bags of frozen veggies for myself mm -hmm. since that's what I eat. Did you bring a blender and your protein powder? And I mean, like what, do you, like, you know what I mean? Like you, obviously you had a protein shake ready for you. Did you not think to bring other food? I don't know. It, there's holes in this story, Doug. I don't like it. It's fair. I think um, for me, if if I went and I got hungry and I had some stuff from your pantry, I would replace it. Because and that, and yeah, I mean that's, that's that's what I would do in that right. regard. Because it'd be like I'm gonna eat this because I'm hungry and I, whatever for whatever reason. If, if 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 I live by the rule, if you kill it, you fill it. That's my that's my there rule. There you go. I learned right. that at, at, at summer camp. You kill it, you fill it. So, um, I would absolutely replace that, or I would I would leave you some money to replace whatever sure. I've taken or whatever, just as 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 payment. Um, so, yeah, you you've convinced me in that. Like to, to ultimately call it, text. you know, she is she is an asshole for to answer her question. She goes, "Am mm -hmm. I the asshole for eating her food while I was dog sitting for her?" Yes, you are. In this specific instance, yes, you are because. You didn't. You just did it, and then it was just left. Bye. Didn't tell him. Yeah, right. Didn't do anything. Like you thought it wasn't a big deal just to eat someone else's food, and then would I be the asshole if I don't pay her back? I think. I don't think you have to pay her fifty bucks. No, she gave like, you that and didn't communicate that it was for food. So that's exactly. On her. So I don't think you owe her fifty bucks. I no. think you can find out how much that stuff costs, and you can give her the, I don't know, nine dollars and thirty seven cents for three bags of cauliflower or whatever it is that it was. Um, but yeah, you're an asshole for eating their food and not telling yeah. them. Yes. So it's the same. Yeah. Woo. All right. Well, Justin, what do you have to recommend this week? I am going to recommend. I thought I put something different on this list, but since I did not, we're going to go with it. Uh, the zone of interest. Um, I want to watch it. <clears throat> What's that? I want to watch it. I'm not in the mood I'll for it yet. So. I'll say this. It is, so again, a, a 24 film. Um, it was up for, for Oscar for, I think best foreign and best uh, picture. Um, it's, how can I say it? So it it's very not uh, American cinema. So yeah. go into it with that idea. Right. Um, I do not want to give any other opinions on it because I want, I want, you to experience it. And I really do want to talk to you about it once you watch it. But I will say that when I first started watching it, I was like, I don't know if, uh, I don't know if I'm digging this. And by the end I sat with it and I woke up the next day and I went, nah, that was a fucking good movie. That was good. Classic A24 film. Where you had right? to like, you're just wait, like, did I like this? And be like, yeah. did I like it? Yeah, I did. I did. <laughs> it, verdict is yes. 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 Um, so yeah, so I would definitely recommend watch the zone of interest, but when you do, go into it understanding that it was not made in the American Hollywood machine and therefore it is uh, em employing a few different storytelling elements. So That's a typical A24 film is what you're saying. Uh, yes and no. I don't know. Go and watch it just uh, and then let us know on social media. This sounds think. like a lot of the A24 films that I've watched. So, you know, I'm like, cool. I, I got it. I'm good. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, it is. It's a, I think it's on. H, it's saying it's on. Yeah, on it's HBO, on Max. So you might be able to stream it for free. I. Yeah. I ended up paying for it, but uh, yeah. Anyway. Doug, uh, what do you I got? I'd like to recommend another A twenty four film, A Life After Beth, uh, starring uh, Aubrey Plaza and Dane DeHaan and a couple of other people. Uh, this was like I think I got to this one and I was like, oh, thank God, a breath of fresh air of like really dark <laughs> shit. Um, <laughs> Essentially, uh, Dane DeHaan plays uh, the boyfriend of Aubrey Plaza's character, Beth, and uh, Beth dies. Um, she gets bit by a rattlesnake when she's hiking, and he's really sad about it. And then he sees Beth again, and you start to realize that uh, zombies start to be a thing. And it's kind of an interesting look at uh, love, uh dealing with uh, relationships and uh, zombies. And it's, it's a very, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a fun, it's a fun film. I like it. It's really good. I'm just After watching all they... the dogs die, I was like, oh, this is a fun one. <laughs> so no dogs die in this one. Nope. Spoiler alert. Yay! No dogs die. Yeah. Um, 
So it is listed on IMDb as comedy fantasy horror. Would you say it has elements of I'd comedy say that's and horror? a pretty accurate description of okay. it. Okay. So yeah, it's cool. really well done. It's really well acted. Uh, and I really enjoyed it. So you can catch that on Max right now. It's very good. Sweet. It's good quite, deal. quite good. Oh, I like it a lot, yeah. Well, gang, thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, as always, check us out at YouTube, youtube.com slash podcast for all of our good stuff, uh, for our full episodes, for show highlights, and also good stuff like me hosting video game streams on Fridays at 8 p.m. Central. Uh, do us a favor while you're there. Hit the like button if you like what you see, and also hit the subscribe button to get up to date on everything we're doing. Also check links in the description for our Discord, for our Patreon, and for our merch. And be sure to follow Justin as well. Also, we're on all our social medias at Mind Gap Podcast. And Justin exists there, too. On Instagram, it's uh, at Justin underscore Michael, spelled M-I-K-E-L, while you're in the online realm. Uh, sorry, it is the fun way of spelling it. Whew, almost almost broke a 441-week streak of that. Yeah. While you're in the online realm, check us out on any of the uh, platforms where you can find and consume podcasts. Uh, share, subscribe, rate, review, all those things. The big one is sharing. Please let people know that we exist. Then uh, uh, dot com, Tuesday and all social media. Love and Improv Film dot com and Love and Improv Film on Instagram. Woohoo! Well, Woo-hoo. gang. With that, I will say, Justin, thank you. Douglas, thank you. Listeners, watchers, thank you. And if you haven't shit your druthers, have a dandy fucking week. Mind Gap Podcast.